This is going to take a look at converting standard vector designs to hand-drawn artistic fashion style effects designs. The type of designs we see very popular in the market today. You see these all over the retail shelves and the stores and everybody's going with this vintage artistic type look and vector graphics while they're okay for creating these designs we're really a lot better off we're able to design these with what we refer to or what Corel refers to as monochrome art in Corel Draw. And the reason for monochrome is that with monochrome objects that are actually bitmap or raster objects in Corel Draw, you can have spot colors associated with these graphics. And once you understand how to use monochromes and how they work, you now will have the full power of all of the raster effects that are available in Corel Draw under the bitmaps tab here available for your graphic design work and unfortunately over the last 10 years as Adobe has become the industry leader the quote unquote industry standard much of this functionality in Corel Draw has been completely ignored or is completely unused by the majority of people that are using the application and I have found over the years that in reality this functionality in Corel Draw is ideally suited to creating these looks and effects very easily, very quickly with excellent color management and the ability to create these artistic distress grunge effects on the fly in minutes and convert virtually anything to them. There's this whole gamut of functionality in Corel Draw that most users have no idea even exists or how it works but yet it works much more easily than the same functionality does in, a photo, in Adobe Photoshop, but yet you have all the power of Corel's vector functionality at your fingertips too. So you really end up with the best of both worlds for what is absolutely the best price. I mean, you can go out and buy a copy of Corel Draw on eBay for about $100. If you want to get into the Adobe products, you're going to spend well over $1,000. You're going to have a much steeper learning curve. You're going to have a significant... Um, amount of work required to do some of these things that we do very easily and draw them very quickly and of course all of its color separatable and color manageable and there's some things that are supported from a raster standpoint in Corel Draw that aren't supported in Adobe Illustrator or at least are very difficult to work with in Adobe Illustrator compared to Corel Draw. Now I'm not railing on Photoshop or Illustrator. I use both of those products especially Photoshop but when I need to get something done with a nice effect very quickly and very easily, I'm going to go into Draw and start working directly in Draw. I'm not going to be throwing my files around, opening them in other things. And also the texture control and some of the raster effects that I have in Draw are, in my opinion, superior to the effects and filters in Photoshop. Now, that's my opinion, but that's only because they're easier to work with. We're going to see in this tutorial how we can take a standard vector design and convert it into a fashion artistic distress grunge design very quickly and very easily in draw and then color separate that and get that out into production with just two colors but yet create a really nice effect for our client and the fact is if you're walking into your clients with nice designs set up with fashion effects and artistic looks the stuff that's popular on the retail shelves and presenting these types of looks and your competition your local market is just throwing vector around and tossing ink on t-shirts and not really paying attention to what's going on graphically you'll begin to get an edge on him competitively because no matter who, who your customers are, whether it's logos, high schools, youth groups, whatever, associations, organizations, they are buying graphics on garments and graphics are art and creating artistic expression through the designs that you're creating for your clients is ultimately going to give you a competitive advantage over anybody who's just tossing around straight vector. Now there's a place for vector and I'm not against vector, I'm just saying if we know how to use these tools in Corel Draw, we can very quickly, in a matter of minutes, move from a standard vector design into an artistic fashion high-end type look very easily, very quickly, still have spot color management, color separations, even half tones, the whole gamut is all here. But unfortunately, we don't understand that because a lot of the training and a lot of the information that's presented related to Corel has been incomplete throughout the years, and we haven't had users developing the techniques and routines. And everything that I've been doing the last couple of years has really been to help small shops develop the skill sets they need get the time that they need to spend that extra four or five minutes in the design add some effects present better art to your customers and compete with the shops the big shops that are in the adobe products with full art departments and once you understand how to do these things and draw you can compete with these art departments and with these shops very effectively and very easily and we'll see that in this particular tutorial moving along with our projects we can see we've got a simple vector 
design here and actually it's got some nice wings here and we've got a banner at the bottom and some flourish here a little bit of a vintage look going on here wildcat soccer very simple soccer ball very basic design but we'll see that we can take this basic design and create a very nice looking artistic distress grunge type design from it very easily in Corel Draw if we know how to work with our raster objects and this particular object that I want to work with is a monochrome bitmap and we'll convert to monochrome bitmaps here and we'll cover some very powerful techniques relating to monochrome bitmaps and Corel's artistic filters. Now one thing we need to realize is when we start working with objects going from vector to raster objects in Corel we're going to be working with two different objects because we're going to have two different colors. We're going to have black and white. Now I'm going to set this up so there's two colors so you can see how if you were going on to a garment, let's say we've got a white garment here, but you want to present some options to your client and one of the best ways to do this when they give you a design that's vector or something like this is to go ahead and create that for them but then make what we call upselling comps. Add some effects to the design. If they're, they're saying they want a white t-shirt, show them the design with two colors on a light or dark garment or mid color or dark garment you're going to add a couple bucks to your order now you start adding a couple bucks to six out of ten of the orders in your shop your bottom line is going to increase significantly so keep that in mind while we're working here you want to be able to take a vector design like this and show this this is what the client wanted in vector okay well now here's your design but here I did some artistic you know made it look kind of like a fashion design for you and here it is on some different colors present that to your client you're going to upsell them you're going to add to the amount of the order we had a let me see, we had a customer call us about three months ago. He had taken a design like this and then added some effects to it, took the design they asked for and the effects design to the coach. The coach took the effects design, hung it up in the lunchroom. The order went from 200 to 600 shirts in a matter of two days, and he charged him an extra $2 a shirt because of the effects and the extra color and putting the shirt on a different color. So you want to be able to wear how to do these things and how to do your upselling, and you take these five minutes and these techniques that we present to you, create the multiple comps for your clients, upsell them, and you've got a 200 shirt order to a 600 shirt order with $2 extra shirt. There's an extra an extra $1,500 in the order right there. Boom, and he spent 10 minutes adding some additional effects to his design. So we'll keep that in mind while we're working on this, and we'll go ahead and get started here. Actually, I'm going to do is take this particular graphic that I've got on the shirt here, simple vector graphic. I just want to copy this. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to go Insert Page After, and then I'm going to Paste. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom out here. I'm going to change my page size here to 13 by 19. So I'll just click off my graphic and I'll get my properties bar up here for my document. I want to go up here. We'll go to 1.3 and we'll go to 1.9. I want to print this full size and work on it two size so that I don't have any problem with my pixels. One thing you want to realize, when you start converting your graphics to raster, you want to be two size at a minimum of 300 dpi. If I had started working down here, done all my effects and then tried to expand my graphic out to the size I want to print it on my t-shirt I'd have serious problems with pixel pixelation and things like that so I want to be working at size I'm going to be printing at 12 by 12 more or less and this will be just fine now the first thing I've got to do is I'm going to go with two colors I'm going to need to separate this into my two colors because I'm going to do the white as an effect and then I'm going to bring my other color my black on top of that as effect and then I'm going to convert my garment to a different color and make an upselling comp while I'm doing this. <clears throat> so first thing I need to do here is I want to convert this to a bitmap but I need to be aware of something while I'm doing that. If I go just go to bitmap, convert to bitmap, actually I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't want to do that yet. The first thing I want to do is color separate this. So let's do, let me slow down here and we'll go ahead and separate this first. And the reason I want to separate this is because I want to do effects on the white and the black. So when I lay down my white ink I'm going to have effects there and when I lay down my black ink I'm going to have effects there also. So the first thing I want to do is color separate this. So I'm going to go to Simple Seps, and I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my color management here, Create Palette, and I can see I have a couple of different grays and stuff here. I want this to go black and white, as you can see here. And I'm going to want this to just be two colors. I'm not going to want, because I'm going to start working with effects and stuff, I'm not going to want this lighter gray in here, so I'm going to bring that to a black. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and one-click Convert down here and bring this all down in color so I've only got four colors to deal with. Now I've got two grays and a white, and I want to get rid of these grays. So go ahead and click here, click here, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Replace Color. I'm going to turn Preserve Tints off, and I want to do Fills and Outlines. Go ahead and turn that off, and I'll actually just go with the CMYK Black. That's okay. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and see what we've got here. Once again, if I go to Create Palette, I can get three blacks, and I'm just going to go to two black, black and white, one-click convert.